Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar and this is Big Discussions 76. My original channel, first of all, please like this video, please share it, and please subscribe to my channel. If you want to donate something to the channel, that information is below in the description box and you can also leave a uh, super thanks if you are particularly moved by this. Well, I am uh, back with another passage uh, from another book, uh, I I read several books at once, and um, I think my mother does the same thing. So you put one down, you pick another one up, and you you read books in parallel. And once again, I've gone through a bit of a rebrand, uh, and I'm really selling myself as a, a writer, um, in addition to being a YouTube content creator and as uh, the author uh, Gerald Early. And Stephen King, as they said, uh, in order to become a writer, uh, in order to become a writer, you have to uh, read a lot and write a lot. So I uh, came, uh, I became aware of The Richer Sex by Liza Mundy, uh, but this is a book uh, that uh, talks about the evolved uh, gender relations uh, between men and women and uh, marrying patterns and mating patterns and preferences um, as um, women have um, become more educated and gotten more uh, entrenched in the economy and in the workforce. Uh, so far, it's a very good book. And I'm going to read a passage from chapter four. This is uh, the new rules of mating. And uh, once again, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to leave you to come to your own conclusion conclusions because I think that's what a good writer does. Uh, this book was written uh, in uh, 2012. So this is 10 years old. Uh, but I think it's very um, accurate in terms of what's happening in the world today and how things have changed. I, In my content here, I talk about how uh, I sometimes talk about how it's a much different world than it was in 1950. Okay and earlier than that. Okay, so the new rules of mating. And this is the beginning of chapter four. Women in college dorms now routinely sit around debating whether they would be willing to date or marry a man who did not go to college. It has become an ordinary question, one of those idle yet urgent self-examinations that arise when women are looking toward the future trying to figure out how their lives will unfold. Women fresh out of college ask one another the same question. A friend and I were talking about uh, deal breakers, uh, recollected Kate, a Boston University graduate who works for a nonprofit in Washington, D.C. The first item that came up, uh, the main quality that would uh, disqualify a guy as dateworthy was lack of a college degree. I just would uh, not go there, she said. She worries uh, that this sounds elitist, but she has uh, tried it and it did not go well. He was a veteran, a pretty young veteran of Iraq. He's a nice guy, but we just clearly had nothing to talk about. He didn't even vote. I was like, you are in, in Iraq and you don't vote. She reflected, I feel like uh, the way my life is, what I say and do, there's just a threshold that I think college creates that I wouldn't go under. This is a problem for thousands of women surveying the romantic landscape uh, and seeing a dearth of men as well uh, schooled as they are, and it's new. When I was in college in the 1980s, my roommates and I sat around talking about our futures too, and what we wondered was how we might have families and careers of our own given how high-powered the men we knew were. Among the many things we worried about, uh, whether uh, there would be enough male college graduates to go around was not one of them, but it also never occurred to us that we might ask a husband to stay at home or that he might want to. It never occurred to us that a man might be willing to privilege our career over his. Nor did we wonder what the point of a man is. Women now ask this question. A guy 
no longer is a necessary thing, observed Betsy Solar. Solaire. When I, when I talked to her at 20, Solaire was a senior already making $70,000 directing the social networking program for Florida International University in Miami. She didn't have a boyfriend and wanted one, but she stopped every now and then to ask herself what for. I almost feel like guys aren't necessary anymore. And it's kind of a terrible thing, she reflected. I'm not sure what you do. I guess you keep hoping that you meet this guy who is Prince Charming, who has a great job, as you do, and is, I guess, aspiring as you are. But it almost seems impossible. With that, she summarized the modern female quandary. Now that I am self-sufficient, what do I need a man for? Remind me. Why would I want to get married? And within marriage, how would our lives unfold? And assuming that I would like a man to go out with, where would I find him? Good questions. And they show how disorienting women's economic rise uh, can be for the women enjoying it. There tends to be disagreement among ac academics over what men and women want in a mate. But it is safe to say this, during the second half of the, of the 20th century, both men and women came to prefer partnering with someone from the same educational and socioeconomic background. Women no longer expect to marry up, to be uh, Princess Diana, young and naive, attaching herself to an older, better educated husband. We want to be more like Kate Middleton with Prince William. Those two went to the same university took comparable degrees, actually she did a bit better, in parentheses, and are the same degree of good looking. We want to be attractive and wealthy and for our spouse to be those things as well. We want to be, we want to be Sheryl Sandberg, COO of Facebook, married to Dave Goldberg, CEO of SurveyMonkey. We want to to be a gorgeous and wildly successful internet entrepreneur married to a gorgeous and wildly successful internet entrepreneur. Women have not been uh, trading beauty for wealth, uh, not for quite a while. Women have been trading beauty and wealth for beauty and wealth. In a sense, as sociologist Andrew Sherlin points out, we have always wanted spouses who resemble us, but matching once meant marrying someone from your religion or ethnic culture. It was common in the 1950s and 1960s for a Catholic woman who did not have a college education to marry a Catholic man who did because what mattered was being Catholic. To marry outside your religion or culture was considered risky. Now we match through education or lack of it. Education for many is our culture. This is a development with real social ramifications not all of them good. It is one reason social and income inequality have become uh, exacerbated. As men and women with high earning potential seek out one another, people with less education pair up or more likely don't marry at all, and the economic rift between Americans grows wider. Once when women did marry up, marriage was a social marriage had a social leveling effect. These days, marriage widens the growing division between the haves and the have-nots. This trend toward uh, matching may be one reason why lately even the Darwinian argument has been revised. A new theory among people who look at evolutionary incentives for parenting is that an uh, early woman did not trade her looks and fertility in return for provision from a strong and high status male. Instead, early women, early woman was herself an energetic and competent provider. With her foraging uh, Pleistocene mom brought in as many calories as Pleistocene dad, maybe more. The biological anthropologist Helen Fisher argues that what we are seeing is a return to the way humans used to live. She points out that during our hunter-gatherer phase, women were not exactly hanging around 
the encampment waiting for men to haul in freshly killed woolly mammoth. To the contrary, women were the reliable bringers in of uh, sustenance, going out every day to find roots and berries their families could survive on. While men trickled in periodically with the odd but delectable hunting prize, the occasional piece of protein that was roundly applauded, she argues that we are seeing a return to the original human pattern where women were co-providers. All right, that is an early passage from chapter four of uh, The Richer Sex. Uh, and that chapter is entitled The New Rules of Mating. So I just, I, you know, I heard about this book. I thought it was an interesting book. Uh, certainly uh, social norms have changed. Uh, gender relations have changed uh, since the time when my parents were young and since the time my grandparents and their parents were young, things have changed. And I think that this book um, very much captures that. Um, as I read through this book and I, and I find chapters and passages that I think are worth capturing here on my YouTube channel, I will uh, continue to upload content similar to this. So let me know what you think about this passage below in the description box. And let me know um, what this makes you think about. Let me know um, have you seen any of this type of thing yourself in your life and in your journey? So I'm going to stop this here. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe, especially if you're new. Uh, make sure to hit that notification bell in case I go live. If you want to make a donation to the channel, that information is below in the description box. And you can also leave a super thanks. Please consider joining the Big Words LLC newsletter. That link is also below in the description box. In addition to being a YouTube content creator, I am also a writer working on my own book, The Engineers, A Western New York Basketball Story. That link is also below in the description box. And you can go take a look at the project on my writer's blog. And you can leave a comment at the bottom as well. So with that, everyone, I'm going to stop here. Um... As always, uh, stay safe out there and always remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Take care and I will talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.